What up guys, CP the Tool Addict here. I am heading 200 miles south to pick up something for the channel, something new. Me and the old, me and the old shop mutt, shop dog, he just wants to hang his teeth out the window. You know, I keep telling myself all day today, how exciting. I don't know where I'm going, don't know what I'm doing. Uh, don't know even know if I'm gonna, you know, even like it once I get there, but the adventure. The freaking adventure is what really turns me on to this. Like, guys, you know, they get a, you know, you don't even have to do much to them. If you just go get a project and try to get it running and do something, you know, I mean, this is the, the adventure is what really is exciting. Right there is where this truck sat for the last 25 years. And they drug it all the way up here. And then we worked and worked and worked, and Henry included. And there she is. As you can see, uh, it's been a long, hot day, honestly. It was in the, almost in the 80s today, but we're definitely got this thing reloaded up. It's mine, let's get heading back north. Absolutely stoked to have this truck up here. So let's get her back to the shop and get to working on it. Hope you guys enjoy this. Grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. I want to introduce you to my 1965 Chevy C20. It is a factory original uh, barn find. No, it's not a barn find. That's not accurate. It's a field find. Uh, this thing is unmolested. 100% original GM steel and we're going to talk about it and walk around give you some facts show you a little bit about it and talk about what I'm going to do about this on the channel then we're going to do a will it run all right so uh as you can see here we have some big tow rig mirrors and one cut difference that you'll notice and also this was original an Iowa truck too so this is to my state it does have <laughs> the good old barnacles on it she'll get a bath and she'll clean up a little bit wrap around windshield we might need some seals right here but the c20 on the three quarter ton was up higher where the c10s were down here lower so that's one little difference about them but this truck is a true not a survivor i guess because it's kind of dead but it's got character <laughs> it is a three-quarter ton so it has a full floater axle on it it's got a little of something extra to it too that's a little spicy if you look back up in here yep she's got a leaf spring but they're also kind of a track bar with coil springs and uh this is pretty solid despite the little bit of rust you see there these have a unique suspension we'll look in the bed they are a wooden floor bed, which this one's shot. Uh, Two-piece drive shaft with a carrier bearing. Pretty interesting trucks, to be on, to say the least. The stripe down the side of the truck here was a option on these. Also, in 1966, they had backup lights that were an option. This one does not have that because it's a 65. Why did I go with a three-quarter ton? Well, just to get into this a little bit more, this was my first truck same color same cab not my actual first truck but this was my first truck in 1994 i bought with my own money spent 2400 dollars on a 1966 chevy with a 327 and a four speed muncie uh and it was a hugger orange like this one pretty much the same truck mine had a chrome bumper on it this is, has a painted, that's also, there were some options with that. Obviously you can see the headlights. The hood is pretty unique to these. They have a little riser on them. Now this is a long box fleet side. They came in step sides. 
so on and so forth. Uh, they had short box, fleet sides. Uh, they also had cabin chassis you could get, but I had a three-quarter ton model. That's what I was looking for. That's what I found. After 20 years of me looking, I finally found this truck. Also, another interesting thing was they had, in 66, they were standard with custom badges on the side here, chrome ones. You know about 66s, they were customs. They had different mirror options. Uh, I believe these were added on to this. I don't know that these were factory, and I'll show you why on the other side. The antenna is factory on this. Pretty cool, pretty sturdy. Um, <clears throat> the other thing was unique was the tire size, 17.5. This is the original factory GM tire and wheel. And how I say it's the original factory, well, it's probably not the original rubber, but it is a bias ply tire. But that, however, is the original rim and hubcap on there. And they were 17, 17 and a half, eight by 17 and a five. Pretty uh, cool. Front end's pretty simple on these. You know, just a drag link on it. Frame, once again, is pretty decent. We're not rotted out down here on the cab mounts. Um, yeah, we got some little stuff going on here. The barnacles, it's been setting outside for years now, but we're gonna fix all that. Let's take a peek under the hood. This has a latch. They're kind of tricky, come on. Like, there we go so this is the engine compartment tons of room for fun things to happen which eventually we might possibly do an ls swap possibly do a 327 because that was an original factory op option maybe even a 289 we've got a hood over here we've got just your standard wiring here a single cylinder mass or Single master cylinder, no power brakes on this one. Six cylinder, now this one, I believe, might have a 230 uh, straight six in it, but there also was an option for 292, I guess, but standard options were a 230 V6, 283 or 327. I'd prefer to have a 327, but that's, I got what I got. It's got a four-speed Muncie in it, granny low, no factory air. Uh, look at that radiator. She's a cute one. Real tiny. We've got the battery box over here. Uh, the starter's down there. Some cobbling wiring, but we are missing the uh, hot cable for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you can see there it's got some plugs. It supposedly has new points in it. Now, the reason why this hasn't ran for a while, supposedly, is that the oil pump's bad. So we're going to find that out when we do a will it run. So I hope you guys are interested in checking that out. Now here's that fine looking booty on this thing. You see we've got the chain dumps here for the tailgate. It's in pretty cute, pretty good shape. We got a few dents and dings here. Even got the sealer still on the bumper here, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> that little clevis is the little clevis that would. Does have a tail light. Those aren't my plates. Um, still has the original GM tail light covers on it. So that's pretty cool. I don't mind the bumper, but we might do an upgrade on that. You guys let me know in the comment box what you think. Um, definitely going to be interested in figuring out that. Another fun fact about these trucks is, is that there was over 200 models in 1965. I think somebody even set up to 300 when I was doing some research. And that's including El Camino, um, your grain trucks, all of that. But in 1965, that's pretty incredible. This truck... MSRP price in 1965 was $2,209. And the highest one that's ever been sold, recorded right now, is a $97,000 sale. So these trucks do have a little bit of a cult following, which I've kicked myself for selling my old one for years. The other thing is, is the 327 that came in these, with the 375 horsepower 327, that motor held the record for the most factory horsepower all the way up till 2001, which obviously the LS took that over. So that's, I got a little bit of sentimentalness. My, my heart's a little bit sentimental when I talk about 327s because it was the first motor I had. It's a great motor and the stroke 
is shorter on a 327 and there's arguments about the buds better 350 or 327 but a 327 will rev harder rev higher um there's you know people debate about longevity of them whatever i don't care i like it because she's a little turner those things are they're seven thousand pounds seven thousand and if you look at the, the 5.3 was actually redesigned after the 327 to be honest with you and it's a 317 cubic inch the 327 was a 5.4 liter was a 5.4 and the th the 5.3 is a 317 cubic inch motor so that's another cool thing why i kind of have a thing for ls motors too i know a lot of you will say cp why do an ls swap i get it people that, but they're practical guys and you just that's one of those things. Now, I I would do a 327, but uh, I I wouldn't mind doing a 327, and I might do that. And we'll you can let me know in the comment box, and we'll take some people's. I want you guys to help me build this truck. So let's talk about some more on it. Once again, back to the rear end. This is a full floater 410 gear rear end, um, and it is a full removable. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the front bolts on it. Once again, those those track bar types. The brake lines are supposedly replaced on this. The exhaust, it, it needs some help. This is not a big back window truck. So obviously that's a thing. The gas cap. The gas tank is not underneath it. And we'll open it up and look inside. Let's check out this side of the truck, shall we? Got to make sure my microphone's on. I love these buttons. Man, listen to this door when I open this up. <laughs> listen to that shot. These things, nothing shuts better than these doors. Chevy had it nailed. We got a little surface going on in here. Nothing crazy, but once again, super solid floors. The old vent, air conditioned. Yes, 1965. They did have factory air conditioning options. First year was 1964. And then I think in 65 they offered, which it was under dash, and I think they offered in dash in 1965. Five, but look at this dash man you guys i mean this seat this side of the seat over here is amazing i'm gonna try to get that side fixed and whatnot let's look in the glove compartment oh <laughs> oh yeah Ugh. that's violent but we do have a cardboard uh insert that's what's kind of neat about these uh that's crazy that that's still in here though and the mouse pee didn't like ruin it we'll have to get that out of there well, nah, but this is i'm telling you what guys i i got a great deal on this truck and the gentleman that uh sold it to me was an awesome super nice guy the ash tray <laughs> uh i mean just I, I can't i'm can't i'm so happy to be having a piece of american history here uh what is that we got some silk plate there uh, we got some junk in here oh we got a pillowcase Tell me that's a Western shirt. That, is that is that Randy Travis's? No. What is it? Is that paint? What? <laughs> that's some work. Ooh! Ah, I think I hit something nasty in there. What do we got under here? Look at the seat. How they galvanized. I mean, this truck is in just phenomenal shape. Oh, the locks on a Chevy, if you guys didn't know on these old ones, is just down. And you can't lock them only on the driver's side. You have to push this down and then lock it with the key over there. Pretty interesting, but yeah, I'm super pumped about this. Let's go over to the other side. All right, uh, and I want you to just close your eyes and waft, and you can almost smell that farm fresh smell. All metal doors, pretty decent along the bottom here. The sill plates are in pretty good shape. No major rust under the floorboards that i can see there's not it's not crazy it's not like it's been padded it's got the factory i can't even peel it up but these are these are solid yeah see that just dirt fell out maybe a little flake or two but the floorboards are super solid we've got the uh anti-millennial theft device in here the e-brake is up here on the handle and uh there's the mileage on there and i thinking i'm thinking that's pretty accurate it says eighty six thousand. the guy told me his uncle owned it but judging by the pedals and whatnot this is an eighty six thousand mile one owner truck um so it's got the heater box 
down over there the seat flips off your fuel tank is right behind here supposedly it was replaced we have yet to look into that we've got yeah look at that raisinets mini raisinets do you guys want some uh yeah the old mini raisinets windows crank pretty good not sticking up pretty excited about that the wind wind wing window good old chevy emblem factory radio not even molested in the truck how about that i have almost all the knobs the original key what a gem inside of here just a time capsule no rear view mirror interestingly enough we've got the dome light which we'll probably have to work on that but i mean this thing i've seen guys on youtube trying to sell these trucks for like five grand oh there's another interesting fact they put the vin up on the top of the door sill on these but uh yeah i've seen guys on youtube trying to sell these trucks in way worse condition than this one the vents it's another thing look at that we got the vents the plate <laughs> there's a fuse box for some of you guys that are new electricians that'll giggle about not a whole lot going on there that's the beautiful part about these trucks guys so simple you anybody can do this so i wanted to talk about the mirrors so either and some of you might know and i don't know for sure but there's original screw holes for different mirrors right here and i don't know if they did that just because that's how they did trucks a lot of times back in the day um they just left them like that the amount of options on this like the rear view mirror not missing the custom badges up there on the corner those things kind of uh seemed like to me they should have been standard but they're not all in all this is my dream truck and despite YouTube um, and any other things, I wanted this truck and bring something different to the channel, but I've been wanting this truck for an absolute long time. I'm gonna try not to get too sentimental and choked up here, but this was my first truck that my dad and me, or my dad uh, would have actually approved of me buying. And my dad passed away seven years ago. We didn't ever have the greatest relationship, but I still loved him. And uh, he was pretty hard on me. And I guess he made me the man I am today. Um, so I can't uh, be knocking him for that. He tried hard to raise me. And I know that he would just be happy that I got this truck back. Because he told me never to sell it. And I sold the truck when I was 18. For, I was a dummy because I didn't want to fix the brakes on it. Um, and it's just... <clears throat> this this means a lot to me this means more to me than anything honestly to get this truck running and put this on the channel it's just something that i've always wanted to do we might have to change some seats in there it's not fat guy friendly i will tell you guys that <laughs> some of you are probably already thinking that like how's that guy gonna get in that truck well we'll figure it out uh, might have to change some stuff we're gonna get it running and ru driving the exact way you see it right here right now i've got some parts coming for it. by the time you see this video should have some parts i'm gonna try to move it or move it in in between uh you know things that i have to do this old american steel you can't find this anymore and it's it's leaving and i gotta tell you this price on the, the msr pre price on this truck, a 2200 is probably what most of them are going for in way worse shape than this one. Um, so that just goes to tell me there is a market for them and there's a value for them. They aren't going to drive like your new trucks, and that's not what I'm looking for. It's to bring back memories of people and have fun with, and that's exactly what it is. And You guys are going to get to watch all of this happen on my channel, and I'm excited to share it with you. Um, really looking forward to it. I've been dying to get this video out to you guys for you know since i got it and uh and, and i'm sure by the time you get it out it's going to be a couple weeks since i ever got it but you hopefully you guys enjoy it and i hope you guys uh really look forward to doing this the next video will be at a will it run video we'll be putting tires wheels battery um and doing it show you guys how to do this to save yourself a lot of headaches and possibly the easiest way and i have not seen and I'm not dogging on anybody, but I have not seen anybody on YouTube um, that puts this all together the way I plan on doing this to show you the simplest ways. Just make sure you knock it out. And that's exactly what it's all about. Being a mechanic for technician now, mechanic for all the, all my life, there's some things that you have, you kind of know, and I want to help you guys out so that it encourages you to do these. Now, 
great channels out there like Vice Grip Garage, Junkyard Digs, Dylan McCool, um, you know, uh, Mord Ski Repair, all these guys that do these uh, old vehicles inspired me to do this stuff. And I really, really want to help inspire you guys and help you all along just a little bit more and show you a little bit more detail about this stuff. So it's going to be very interesting because it's a documentation. Uh, so may not be as crazy fun as some of those guys' videos, but you let me know down in the comment box. But anyways, guys, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Ring that bell. Remember, keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.